with the release of Google Gemini 2.0, which you can have up to 2 million tokens for the context window in a single request, which is a huge deal. If you're not familiar with context window is, a context window, simply put, is the amount of information an AI model can process simultaneously. With Gemini 2.0 2 million token capacity, the model can work with extensive data sets, such as entire books, research papers, or detailed project documents, all in one interaction. And given that Gemini API is free right now, I thought I would share how to get started with Gemini API in Python. And believe it or not, Google has improved the framework to make the API extremely easy to use in Python. To get started with using Google Gemini API, make sure you have a Google Cloud account. Navigate to console.cloud.google.com. Select a Google Cloud project. If you don't have a Google Cloud project created, I have put the instruction in the description below. Expand the navigation menu. Under APIs and Services, click Library. Navigate to Gemini API and enable the API. Once the Gemini API is enabled in your Google Cloud project, navigate back to APIs and Services and click Credentials. On the top, click Create Credentials and choose API Key. Once this an API key is generated, save the API key as an environment variable or to a config file and name the variable as Gemini API key. To make the API key a bit more secure, click Edit API key. Set the API restriction with Generative Language API only and save the setting. For the tutorial, we will start out with three Python packages. The official Google Generative AI Python library, python.env to read the environment variable file, and rich to prettify the output in a terminal. Launch your terminal and run the command showing on the screen to install the packages. In the env file, there are three environment variables for the Gemini models. I will be mainly using the Gemini 2.0 flash model for all the examples. Now to avoid repeatedly typing the same thing, create a Python file and name it prep.py. In the prep module, load the model ID and API key from the environment variables and construct a generative AI object called genAI and add the API key. For the video, I will share four examples. How to make a basic prompt request for one-time usage, working with media files, creating a conversation session, and how to incorporate function calling feature to give the model ability to run functions. And these are the media file I prepared for the tutorial. An audio file describes San Francisco, three images, and a podcast audio. All right, create a blank Python script and import GenAI and model from the prep module. To start, initialize a generative model instance using generative model from GenAI object and pass the model you want to use. In this case, we already predefined the model to Gemini 2 flash model. From there, use the generate content method to send a prompt request. And from the response, we can easily print the output and the token usage. Pretty straightforward. If we run the script, we get Washington DC and the API code used 22 tokens. Now, the warning here is due to the latest gRPC passage is incompatible with the generative AI package. To solve this issue, downgrade to the 1.60.1 version. Now, if you rerun the script, the warning message is no longer presented. All right, let's continue. 
if you want to stream the response instead of waiting for the response, in the generate content method, set the stream parameter to true to output the response as a generator. And we can stream the response in chunks using a loop without waiting for the entire response. You can also create a variable to store the stream response to ensure you don't lose the content. That's all for the generate content method. Let's learn how to include media file in our request. For this example, I want to share an image with an AI model and have the AI model describe the image. To add an image in a request, Install the pillow library. In the script, import image class from pillow library and model and gen AI object from prep module. Create the gen model object and load the image using pillow image class. Now to pass the image file in a request, we will pass a list with our request and the image object. The rest are the same. Now run the script. And from the output, we get a pretty accurate description of the image. The key things I want to see is if the cat is mentioned, and it did. The Gemini 2 model is also capable of working with audio files. To include an audio file, use the genai upload file method to upload an audio file and store the output as an object. And the rest is the same. Keep in mind that the order of the item you provided will also impact how the generative AI model will respond. Run the script, and you will get a fully transcribed audio output back. At this point, we have learned the basics of using Google Generative AI Python library. I want to move on to how to create a chat session. Create a Python script and name it chat.py. In the chat script, import the code snippet. That's what I have showing to import the Python dependencies and initialize a rich console. The rich console enhances terminal output by supporting advanced formatting, such as style text, tables, progress bars, markdown, syntax highlighting, making our application visually appealing and easier to read. To control the behavior of the generative model, create a dictionary to specify the parameters. The temperature adjusts the randomness in responses. The max output tokens limits the response length and the response MIME type determines the format of the output, ensuring it meets the desired specifications. Now to define the generative model, create an instance of generative model, specify the model name, use generation config to provide the configuration parameters, and include a system instruction to guide the model's response behavior. That's all for the setup. From the gen model, Call the start chat method to start a chat session. You can also provide a chat history to resume a chat session, or provide a chain of ideal prompts and response to control how a generative model will respond without using system instruction. With the updated Google Generative AI framework, you no longer need to track the chat history manually. Everything will be handled automatically. From the chat session, we can use the send message method to send a prompt directly. To illustrate how a chat session manages its chat log, let me insert a separate send message method. And to return a chat history or a chat log from the chat session, reference the history attribute to return the chat history. If I run the script, We get the responses from the first two questions and a list containing the chat log from the chat session history attribute.
For some reason, if you need to delete the last request and response, you can use the rewind method to do that. And that covers the basics of a chat session. Now, if you need to include media files, similar to the generate content method, you will provide a list with the prompt and media files in a request. When you include media files in your request, the files will get stored in a server to be reused across multiple requests and prompts. To list the files stored from GenAI, call the list files method. And to delete the files, use the delete file method and provide the file ID from the name attribute. Finally, use a while loop to keep a chat session alive. Now, typically, when you create an AI agent, you may want to give an agent a few functions to use to help you with different tasks. It may be a function to make an API call to get the weather information, or a function to go through your Gmail account and summarize emails. This is when function calling feature is extremely useful. To demonstrate how to use the function calling feature, create another Python script. In this script, I will create two functions to illustrate. We are going to use the assign score letter grade function to assign a letter score giving a score in a number. The set light values function will simulate the lighting control to a room. When you create functions for an AI agent to use, you must include type hint in the parameters and output. That way the model knows the appropriate data type to use when calling a function. And it's always recommended that you include a doc string to explain the function usage for the assign score letter function, because the function is simply enough, and I have a doc string explain the function usage, I can get away with providing just the doc string. However, with the set light values function, the function usage may be a little bit more restrict, such as the color temperature and the brightness range. I will insert a section to describe the arguments and output. And to equip the functions, when you create a generative model instance in the tools parameters, add the functions in a list. When you start a chat session, set the enable automatic function calling to true. And the AI agent will now have the capability to make function calls on its own. The rest of the code is the same. If I go ahead and send my request, we get a reply. I've set the lights to 30% brightness with a warm color temperature. And by looking at the response, we can safely assume that the AI agent has selected the correct function with the appropriate arguments provided and called the function on its own based on the request instructed. And to test the AI agent indeed has the reasoning capability to select the function to use, let's give another request. This time I will say, I scored a 98 on my test. What letter grade did I get? And the agent replies, you got an A. I know some people may prefer to handle how an AI agent calling functions manually to ensure they are controlling every single step with caution. This is going to be a little bit more advanced, but once you get used to it, it is not too bad. In the start chat method, I will set the enable automatic function calling to false. Before constructing a generative model instance, I will create a dictionary to store the functions that can be used. The key name has to be the exact function name, and value will be functions in its object form. And in the generative model object creation, instead of manually insert the functions, I can type tools.values. To handle the function calling setup manually, create an empty dictionary to store a function's execution response after we send a request. If an AI agent decides to call a function from its response, it will add a function call procedure that 
contains the function name and the parameter values that the function should be called with. Then we will reference the function from the tools dictionary using the function name as the key and unpack the arguments that contains the argument values. And we will store the output in the responses dictionary. At this point, you have the options to do whatever you want with the function outputs before the result is delivered to the end user. Once we finalize the function outputs, we need to use the function response method to feed the outputs for an AI agent to digest to create a polished response to present to the end user. If I run line 63 from response in the parts section, we can see the function will be executed along with the argument values. Then I will run the loop to store the function output and run the if block to feed the function output for the AI agent to polish the reply and print the deliverable response. And that's all for this Google Gemini API in Python Crash course. The source code will be available to my Patreon members from the link in the description below. If you have any questions or feedback, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding. See you in the next one.